Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Today, our main story is all about whether Google is now in the AI lead, and so appropriately, a lot of our headlines have to do with gyrations and moves among the big labs. We kick off today with a story that I mentioned in passing yesterday as part of the AI predictions, but will now give full coverage, which is that Anthropic has officially closed their latest round of fundraising at a whopping $183 billion valuation. The company brought in $13 billion in fresh capital, co-led by Iconic Fidelity and Lightspeed Venture Partners. There was a laundry list of participating funds, but very notably, this round includes a lot of private equity, sovereign wealth, and retirement funds alongside the usual VCs. This feels in many ways like the round where the AI industry as a whole, not just OpenAI, have definitively outgrown the capacity of Silicon Valley venture funds alone. Anthropic's previous round was $3.5 billion at a $61.5 billion valuation back in February, meaning they've more than tripled in size. Now, part of why they were able to do this is that the company has gone from $1 billion to $5 billion in ARR year to date. And much of that revenue is coming now from high-ticket customers. Anthropic now claims 300,000 business customers and said that their list of large accounts above 100,000 in annual spend has increased sevenfold this year. In a blog post, Anthropic CFO Krishna Rao said, We are seeing exponential growth in demand across our entire customer base. This financing demonstrates investors' extraordinary confidence in our financial performance and the strength of their collaboration with us to continue fueling our unprecedented growth. Claude Code has become a major business line, bringing in $500 million all by itself with usage up at 10x since its full launch in June. The TLDR is that a company that already had the wind in its sails just got a massive new war chest to continue its surge. Anthropic, however, was far from the only major lab with big news this week. OpenAI is kickstarting their next era with new CEO of applications, Fiji Simo, officially at the helm. On Tuesday, OpenAI announced a big acquisition and leadership restructuring to build out their applications team. The company bought analytics platform StatSig for $1.1 billion in an all-stock deal, marking one of OpenAI's largest acquisitions to date. StatSig specializes in A-B testing and other product optimization services. In addition, Statsig CEO Vijay Raji will be brought in as OpenAI's CTO of applications. He'll have product engineering responsibilities for ChatGPT, Codex, and other forthcoming product lines. Statsig will continue to operate as an independent entity and service their existing customer base out of their Seattle office. Other personnel changes include engineering lead Srinivas Narayanan moving on to the C-suite as OpenAI's CTO of B2B applications, reporting directly into COO Brad Lightcap. Kevin Wheel, OpenAI's chief product officer, will be moving to the research side of the business also becoming the company's VP of AI for science. His former product team, including the head of ChatGPT, Nick Turley, will now report directly into Simo. Now, we saw that this was coming, but it is very clear that OpenAI is significantly delineating between the applications and research side of the company. Speaking of talent, the exodus of AI talent continues at Apple with four new departures. Bloomberg reports that Apple's lead AI for robotics researcher, Zhang Zhang, has left to join Meta's robotics studio. Separately, a trio of AI researchers at Apple's in-house LLM team have left for greener pastures at Anthropic and OpenAI. The reporting states that the Foundation Models team has lost roughly 10 members, including their chief, over recent weeks. The departures come as Apple reportedly mulls outsourcing their LLM needs to Google or Anthropic. Sources also said that Apple's staff departures are expected to continue, with basically every other researcher actively interviewing at other AI companies. Said the sources, the poor response to Apple's intelligence and the company's potential shift towards using third-party models have contributed to worsening morale. Yet when it comes to worsening morale and big questions around talent, the biggest lens right now is squarely focused on Meta. Reporting is rife with claims that there are rifts forming inside the new superintelligence lab. The Verge, for example, filled in the gaps from last week's reporting that a trio of researchers had left the team. They reported that two had never formally begun their roles before deciding to return to OpenAI, while the third was a confirmed departure, with the staff member working a month before changing their mind. TechCrunch added that Scale AI's former senior VP of Gen AI product and operations, Ruben Mayer, had left the company after two months. Mayer was brought across as part of the $14.3 billion Scale Aquahire. Still, the reporting is a little strange. TechCrunch's sources said that Mayer was never a part of TBD Labs and had instead been assigned to oversee AI data operations teams, but Mayer himself disputed the source, stating that his initial position was to, quote, help set up the lab with whatever was needed rather than just data. He also said that he was, quote, part of TBD Labs from day one, rather than being excluded from the core AI unit. He said that he did not report directly to Alexander Wang and was very happy with his meta experience, instead leaving for a personal matter. In addition to the departure, TechCrunch reports that Meta is now partnering with alternate data labeling vendors, including Surge and Mercor, instead of working exclusively with Scale. 
A third piece from the Financial Times said that ChatGPT co-creator Sheng Jia Zhao threatened to quit within days of signing with Meta. Now, Zhao was one of the highest profile recruits to Meta and really cemented that they were having a lot of success in poaching top talent from OpenAI. FT sources said that Zhao went so far as to sign employment paperwork to return to OpenAI within days of his recruitment. Shortly afterwards, Meta appointed him chief AI scientist and published an introduction video featuring him sitting next to Alexander Wang and Mark Zuckerberg. One investor close to Meta leadership commented, there's a lot of big men on campus. For their part, Meta does seem to be getting a little frustrated with the frequent coverage, with a spokesperson stating, we appreciate that there's outsized interest in seemingly every minute detail of our AI efforts, no matter how inconsequential or mundane, but we're just focused on doing the work to deliver personal superintelligence. Look, at the end of the day, when it comes to these questions, there are two things. The first is that when you spend the type of money and are as aggressive as this company was in recruiting, that makes this all interesting cannon fodder for media stories. It's unavoidable, even if the Occam's razor explanation for this is that you're not going to be able to be this aggressive without having some people change their minds. In general, I personally am a fan for Occam's razor explanations, and my best guess is that we're in some sort of settling phase, rather than there being abnormally utter chaos, given the extremes of the situation. The second thing to note, though, is that the way to get people to shut up is to put out stuff that works. Now, we're barely months into this, it would be unrealistic to expect even an incredibly performant team to be dropping models and applications this fast, but the big do-or-die moment for Meta Super Intelligence Labs that will absolutely crater this and all other discussion, like the discussion that's also happening around Meta apparently considering partnerships with OpenAI or Google to power their products, the only thing that's going to squash that ultimately is what they put out. That is certainly what we will be watching for the rest of this year, but with that, we wrap today's headlines. Next up, the main episode. 